Hello there. Did you know that Tom Brady and Giselle are filing for a divorce? <laughs> I know, I know it's sad. But uh, I just saw this story pop up in the Reddit and I clicked on it. And then the next story after that was Giselle was spotted at Miami gym working out in public. Now, that got me thinking, why is this multimillionaire former supermodel working out in a public gym or maybe private gym? But why is she working out at all in the public when she can afford her own private gym and work solely on her own? The answer is obvious. She wants the attention, but most of all leads us to the question about why you should work out in public and the truth of working out at home. Working out at home, if you've tried it, if you have tried it, it's boring. Working out in your room, working out in your garage, it can get really, really, really dull. And believe me, I still work out on my own at home. I still train at home, but I do a mixture of everything. So I work out at home. I work out outdoors in the parks and I go to the, the local gyms, unfortunately. And I got to deal with a lot of crap from other people. But the reason, the question is, why do I do this though? It's because variety is the spice of life. But most of all, the truth about working out with others is that you feed off other people's energy. We are social creatures by nature. The fact that you see someone else training, maybe it's not your style, maybe it's completely opposite, or at least we are all on the same page. We're all going, we're, we are all striving towards productivity, getting better, getting stronger, getting faster, getting leaner, losing more weight, getting more ripped, whatever that goal may be. Some of us, as part of a group are lazier than others, which is why you, I, I cannot stand like 99% of the people in, the, in a gym because they're, they're on their smartphones yakking too much or really don't know what they're doing. But aside from that, there's the 1% that I do notice. So for example, I saw a kid yesterday in my gym, this young kid trying to learn handstands and I'll give him the benefit of a doubt. He didn't know what he was doing, but I like that he was trying. I like when people try, you know, in, when you're in a local gym setting, I don't know why, but any gym I step foot in, people look at the person doing handstands. I don't know, their eyes just start, because it's so different from everyone else. Everyone does the same boring shit. They do this, the squats, the benches, the dumbbells, the machines and all that, and the, you know, the treadmill and all that. But you, you rarely do you see someone doing what I do, for example, like handstand push-ups or doing one-arm handstands and all that crazy stuff. So when I see someone else trying to do it, like this, this young, young man, hats off to him because he knows that everyone in the gym is looking at him. So I like the fact that he tried and I, I gave him some pointers and I, I helped him out with his form and he was really, really embarrassed, <laughs> but it was fun teaching him and everyone was watching us as I was teaching him because everyone knows I'm the boss of the gym. So anyways, this leads me to the question, yeah, you can be a positive force in a gym, okay? Even if you're dealing with a bunch of morons in your gym, you can be the leader. You can be the best at, I don't know, jumping rope. You can be the best at, on the treadmill. You can be the best on the assault bike. You can be the best at squatting. Just find your specialty. And then people will, will naturally gravitate towards you, you know, once you niche down. And everyone knows what I do in the gym is crazy. It's, it's, it's boxing, it's calisthenics, it's gymnastics, it's yoga. It's different. It's fighting. It's just, wow, it's eye-catching. And that's my niche. People gravitate towards that. Some, but not all. I get a lot of haters too. So, you do need to be around people. Especially people you can't stand. Okay, you need that stress. Not just the muscle stress, stressing your muscle, but stressing this. So I do a mixture and if you can work out in the park, work out with, within uh, your local jungle gym, whatever. Now my favorite moments was when I was training outside in Korea with the, the whole public outdoors training at night, night, like pitch black at night. 
And you see seniors and young men and women, and all sorts of people, just like, just trying to get better all together as a community, as a neighborhood. It's fantastic. So yeah, that's my, my take on working out from home. You can do it. You can spend thousands of dollars on a squat rack and dumbbells and plates and you know all that stuff. You know, I've looked into it. You'll need at least 10,000, at least 10,000 to get a complete home gym. If you want to completely shut yourself off from the real world, if you can afford that, yeah, go for it. But if you can't, like most of us, yeah, you can get set up for a few hundred dollars, get a few weights, work out at home that builds up that confidence. And then work outside because it's free. You can you can train you you can train outside. You just go to your junk jungle gym, do some pull ups, use the dip bar, bring your jump rope, jump rope, shadow box, and then yeah, invest in a, in a local gym or two. Get get more than two memberships is what I recommend. Get at least two places that you can train because you're gonna get bored of just training in one place. So, for example, sign up for a community center gym and a private gym. That's my tip, my pro tip. Okay, so you have two locations to bounce off from. It, it doesn't get so boring. And you can mix around. You can play around with your settings. Get out there and meet people. You will meet people. Some people will like you. Most people will hate you. And most people, you, you will not be able to stand at your local gym. But get out there, is what I'm saying. Exercise this muscle. So go out there and train. No excuses. Take this to heart. I love you. And bye.